Hey there, Denver area home sellers. Thinking about selling your house in the next 12 to 18 months in Denver, the surrounding area, and really concerned about the costs associated with doing so, or just looking for some clarity on exactly how much it's gonna cost, this video is for you. Hi everybody, and thanks for stopping by the channel. My name is Carl Eschenberg, and I am your Denver real estate agent. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the costs associated with actually selling a Denver area home. Selling a house can be a complex process, and understanding the costs involved both before the sale, during the sale, and after the sale is something that we've seen a lot of people struggle with. So we wanted to make this video just to give you an idea of exactly what you could expect through the entire home selling process. So all that said, there's five primary categories where sellers will experience costs during the selling process. So let's just dive right in, we'll go through them one by one. Okay, so the five home selling costs explain, it's really about five categories of costs, and uh, we're gonna start with pre-sales preparation costs. These are the costs that you're going to incur when you're getting your home ready to sell. And a lot of people don't really kind of take these into consideration, but they are costs. So uh, home repairs and renovations are, are things that you probably are gonna wanna pay attention to. It doesn't matter how new your house is or how old your house is, every house has some level of attention that needs to be addressed prior to listing it, typically. It's pretty rare that the house is just perfect the way it is, even from a cleaning perspective. Perspective, we always recommend our clients do a deep clean. So that can you can do that yourself, uh, but there will be costs for you know cleaning supplies and things like that as well as your time, or you can hire that out, which would obviously be an incurred cost. Replacing appliances, window treatments, hardware, etc., that are worn, uh, dirty, or just not functional, or maybe even just dated, is is an area where you can put a little bit of focus and a little bit of money and really get some serious ROI out of it. Uh, it sounds crazy, but it's just one of those things that people pay a lot of attention to, and sometimes it's subconscious; they don't even realize they're doing. It. And then things like fresh paint can go a long way, both interior and exterior of the house, neutralizing uh, bright colors and walls and things like that in the home, as well as touching up the paint on the outside of the house. We have an entire video on staging your home for curb appeal. I can, I'll link to that right above here. Um, so there's a ton of things that you can do, but these are just a few of the things to kind of think of when you're getting a home ready for sale. And that said, staging. Uh, whether you do it yourself or whether you hire a professional, we always strongly recommend that the house get staged for sale. There's a difference between a house being set up to live in and a house being set up to sell. And, and really what it comes down to is it comes down to neutralizing the personal aspects of the home when you live there and making the experience of seeing the home and feeling the home and, and, and touring the home more widely acceptable to a broad set of buyers. So for example, things like getting rid of collectibles and personal photos and things like that, while it is still your home, those things can actually detract certain buyers from being able to picture themselves in your space, and that's not what we want. So these are some great things you can consider when doing your pre-sale preparation cost calculations. Then you have real estate uh, agent and attorney fees. So whether you work with a real estate agent to sell your house or whether you do it by owner, there still are some costs that you're probably going to incur to do the transaction really, really safely. So if you're working with an agent, everything will be taken care of in those commissions. If you're working by yourself and you're selling by owner, you'll wanna bu budget in attorney fees and contact your attorney to find out what they would cost you to, at a bare minimum, review the contracts that you prepare. So if you do it on your own and you sell it on your own and you do the contracts on your own, have them at least review it so that make sure that you're not missing anything. It's the proverbial dot your I's and cross your T's. Uh, and, and, a, and an extended relationship with an attorney could look something like they actually draft the, con uh, the contracts for you. They're all standardized contracts that are um, approved by the Colorado Real Estate Board. So they are fairly straightforward for an attorney to fill out and most attorneys will have a lot of experience in doing these things. Again, if you're working with an agent that's full service, all these things will be, please be understand and be very clear on one thing. If you are working with a real estate agent or real estate broker, these commissions are full negotiable. So depending on the amount of service that they're offering and the amount of service you're receiving, everything should be negotiated ahead of time so that you understand exactly what those costs are and that there's no surprises, no hidden fees or anything like that. Okay, so I know that's a lot of information right there. So I just wanted to take a break and let you know if you have any questions, we are happy to answer this for you. We are licensed real estate brokers in the state of Colorado. So we can give you accurate answers on anything that you see in this video or any other video on our channel or just anything real estate related. We'd love to help you out with that. So feel free to call us, email us, or text us anytime with questions that you have, or you can just scan the QR code on your screen. We answer all comments, all emails, all texts personally. We'll get you the information you need and make sure that you're empowered to win. All right, let's just jump back into the closing costs and we'll go over the 
rest of them. So now that we've covered real estate agent and attorney fees, closing costs. Now this is one that uh, there's some variables in here sometimes, there's different things that happen, we couldn't possibly cover them all, but we do have a checklist that we talk about, uh, or actually a seller's net sheet, worksheet that we have, that we, we'll make available to you, I'll, I'll mention that in just a minute. But the main, the main things that you're gonna take into consideration when finalizing the sale is title insurance. It's an insurance policy that your lender's gonna require to make sure that there's no defects in the chain of title, meaning no one can just show up at the door one day and knock on the door and be like, hey, you know, this was my grandpa's house and he left it to me, here's the deed. Uh, title insurance is going to insure against that so that you don't lose your home and so that the lender doesn't lose the asset. Uh, escrow and attorney fees, again, uh, I know we just talked about attorney fees, but the closing process of having someone actually manage the closing. So typically that's gonna be a title company here in Colorado, but depending on your situation and how you do it, there may be diff additional fees to pay somebody to actually hand handle the closing process, which is money well spent. Uh, a real estate transaction can be very complicated. It can also be very emotional and having everybody at the table at the same time with an unbiased third party professional to navigate all of that, which is what you would pay your agent for typically. But if you're not working with an agent for some reason, uh, an attorney or the title company would be able to handle that for you, but they will charge you for that. And then transfer taxes and recording fees. Again, transferring the property, there are costs involved in that transfer tax is one of, them. we actually have a seller net estimate worksheet that we will go through with all of our clients. We can work through every single one of these numbers with you as it relates to your situation and give you a very accurate estimation of your home selling costs. So you've gotten your house ready for sale, you've listed and you've sold it, now there's moving expenses. Things like packing and transportation. So this would cover things like movers, boxes, tape, packing supplies, and then a moving truck, renting a moving truck, paying for a moving truck. All those things are costs of the move. So it's important to consider them when you're figuring out your total costs to sell at your home and move to your new property. And then storage. If you have a gap in between uh, ownership, let's say uh, you're relocating and and there's a gap between the time that you sell your home where you're, where you're moving from and you actually close on your home where you're moving to, like say here in Denver, you'll have to take into consideration the, uh, the possibility of paying for storage as well as temporary housing. So whether that's a short-term lease, uh, a hotel or something like that, those are also costs that we would encourage you to take into account just so you have a fully, fully accurate picture of what it's gonna cost to move. Capital gains is the last cost that we'll cover today. Now this varies depending on situation, but in general, if you've been living in the property uh, as your primary residence for at least two of the last five years, you are covered for up to $250,000 in capital gains as a single person, and you're covered up to $500,000 in capital gains as a married person. So what does that mean? If you did really well in the sale of your property and you made over $250,000 in profit when you sold it, as long as you're single and you've lived there for at least two of the last five years, you don't have to pay any taxes on that, a capital gains tax. If you're married and you did really well on your sale of your property, you're covered up to $500,000. So unless you profited more than $500,000 on the sale of the property as a married couple, you will not have to pay the IRS capital gains tax on that sale. Now, that said, if you didn't live there for two of the last five years as a primary residence and you did do that well, there will be additional capital gains tax that you'll have to address uh, at tax. All right, there you have it. Five home selling costs explained in hopefully not excruciating detail, but just enough to give you an idea of the things that you need to be aware of when you're looking at what it's going to cost you, totally cost you to sell your home and move. We do have a home seller guide and there is a home seller net sheet uh, it's an estimate next sheet in there. You can text home seller to the number on your screen or scan the QR code. We'll send it to you for free. It is packed full of information on getting your home ready for sale, to stage, calculating your costs so that you understand fully exactly what you're getting into and exactly what your costs are gonna be. We hate nothing more than to see people surprised at closing or just before closing when they're like, I, I didn't realize it was gonna cost that much. Uh, we want you to be empowered. We wanna put you in a position to win, which is why we publish videos like this every single week. So if you're interested in information like this, consider some subscribing uh, and turning on notifications. The Denver real estate market changes quickly and there's a lot going on right now. So these goal, the, our goal with these videos is to keep you informed so that you're ahead of the stream and you're not trying to catch up and you're really, really well informed and empowered to win. All right, well, we'll be posting our next video next week, but until then, if you have any questions on this video, any of the videos that you've seen on our channel or anything else real estate related at all, feel free to reach out to us by text, phone, email, smoke signals, whatever you want. Uh, I'll be posting the next video next Tuesday. And in, in the meantime, if you absolutely positively have to get out to see houses or something along those lines, my name's Carl Eschenberg, and I'd love to show you around town.